next year, as you mentioned, start of the year, we are going to go back to the moon. We're not going to land. We're going to go around the moon. And then about a year later, we're going to land back on the moon under Donald Trump's tenure, back on the moon six days. And then after that, we're going to set up a base camp. We're going to stay on the moon. And what we learn on the moon is what's going to take us to Mars. Uh, we are in the race. We're in a race to the moon, in a race with China to the moon. And uh, to have a, a base on the moon, we need energy. And uh, some of the key locations on the moon, we're going to get solar power. But uh, this vision technology is uh, critically important. If we're going to be able to sustain life on the moon to then go to Mars, this technology is critically important. Um, and I would just note that we, we're, we're behind, right? If, if, we're, if we're going to engage um, in the race to the moon and the race to Mars, we have to get our act together. We have, to, we have to marshal all of our resources, all of our focus on going to the moon, which is what we're going to do. Speaking of military hardware, Chris, the US President Donald Trump has responded to, quote, highly provocative statements from Russia's former President Dmitry Medvedev by ordering two of his nuclear submarines to be moved closer to Russia. It comes after Medvedev tweeted that Mr Trump's recent ultimatum to Russia over a ceasefire in Ukraine were, quote, a threat and a step towards war. Your reaction? Yeah, look, and it shows how dangerous the world that we live in is, Steve, and also that there is a nexus between powers because one of the things that we do know is that Russia is getting war assets from North Korea and it's also getting them from Iran and China is helping enormously in that. So those four nations are collaborating together and it underlines the fact that the world is a very, very dangerous place at the moment. And Donald Trump, I think, is it's interesting on this front, Steve, isn't it? He thought that he could end the war in Ukraine and the war in Gaza within days, and it's proving that the world is much more intractable than he thinks it is. And one of the things I liked about the US president was the fact that he was saying he didn't want to get involved in any more conflicts. And I hope that he doesn't get dragged into too many more conflicts because, you know, we, what we need is the United States completely focused on what is the actual main game and in our region, that's China.